Oh, it gets worse. I can't even believe you're sitting there with your pucky, pu dang it, your puppy dog eyes looking at me and asking me to then do a cylinder after I've already done a platter or a disc or whatnot. Fine. What about a cylinder? Well, I think we'd be well off using cylindrical axes, a cylindrical coordinate system in this case. Let's draw the cylinder first. You got your X and your Y and your Z, and then I'm gonna, uh, okay, so we set it up in Cartesian and then we go cylindrical in just a second. So a cylinder has a top, and here's the top of that cylinder, nicely centered around the Z axis. See how I put my origin right at the bottom of the base of it? That was nice. And then a uh, cylinder's got walls, and it brings it back down to like right here, right about. And then you're gonna have a little bit of this stuff going on, and a little bit of dotting back behind to show you that it has some volume. Um, it has a, uh, a radius of aura, and I'm gonna give it a height that we'll call H, obviously, for height, right? Um, then we're gonna be thinking about cylindrical coordinate systems, so we need to talk about volume. What does it mean to be a little chunk of volume in these days? How does it feel to be a little chunk of volume? So I'm considering a chunk of volume that I would find right there. That's where my chunk of volume is. And it's gonna have these dimensions. They're very small, so it's silly of me to pretend that this would have any spatial extent. But anyway, here we are just being very silly together. The height is a differential Z element, and the, um, the, the out is just going to be dr. That makes sense. But maybe the cool thing is this side right here, which is ds. Just as we saw with the platter, ds is going to be r times d theta, because as we get farther and farther out, the uh, width of that um, knot cube, that uh, prism -y thing, <laughs> is getting bigger. It's still infinitesimal, but it's getting slightly bigger uh, as we get farther out. Okay, so in uh, in that case, we can define dv as, uh, oh gosh, sorry, we should include the r first. r d r d theta d z. That's this stuff here. They, if we multiply those three sides of our rectangular prism, then we get ourselves a differential volume. So dm then, dm is the thing we've been talking about all of the time. It's just rho times dv, which is rho times r d r d theta d z. Whee! You have to say that when you're finished because otherwise you might start to feel despair. Don't worry. We're doing this absolutely trivial problem just for you. I don't know why you're not doing it. I'm supposed to take the r square d m and then uh, oh gosh this integral is is actually pretty darn cool. We're going from zero to aura, right? We always have to take into account the distance away from the axis so that means we're, we're kind of like like stacking cylinders, but all the cylinders have the same size. They all have a radius aura. So we just do that over the lowercase aura. And then we'll integrate from zero to two pi. That's all the way around the circle for theta. There's our d theta integration. And we're integrating from zero to h in the z direction. And what integral are we performing? Well, I'll tell you. It's r squared times rho. Wait a second, that r squared came from that right there. And now I have to write dm, which is uh, rho times r times dr times d theta times dz. Just try to pronounce that. It looks Hungarian, maybe. And then we'll have to go to the next page. So we'll fold this sucker over so we can look at it just a little bit. I'm looking at it right now. Here I am. Right now, looking at it, and we got a shift because pink was fun for a while, but we're done. Ah, the moment of inertia is. Now, the interesting bits uh, happen in aura because the integral over theta is just going to give us theta integrated from 0 to 2 pi, which is just going to be a 2 pi. And the integral over um, z is just going to give us, well, z, which would then become h minus 0, so we just get an h. So I got a 2 pi h there. Um, I also think that I can pull out the density, the mass density, the um, three-dimensional mass density. Okay, so let's pull, look here, 
pull that out. Okay, and now we have a remaining integral to do, which is an integral from zero to capital R uh, over R, where we've got, looks like, wait a second, see that R? That's the differential R element. Let's not forget that those are, ew, look how I wrote that twice. Yeah, because they were already over here. Boop, boop, boop. I change notation on myself sometimes. I kind of like this. That was something I already had, so I wasn't paying attention. So we got R cubed. That's the only thing we have left here. DR of R cubed. So let's take that integral. That's where the notation kind of um, gets kind of gross because, well, don't you think it would look a lot better if I'd written R cubed DR? Yeah, but I was stuck in this DR and then I write R cubed, so it kind of looks like really gross. Well, anyway, you put it in brothers, it'll be a vine, right? So then you have to take that integral. I'm going to take that integral. I got the 2 and the pi and the h and the rho. And I'm going to take that integral. I will get something like r to the 4th? r to the 4th? Oh, sorry. Capital R to the 4th. But then I'll divide it by 4. And so we have to do some stuff with this. What are we doing with this? Well, let's cancel out some stuff. I get pi times h times rho times r to the fourth, and I divide it by two. And at this point in our show, we always like to go back and think about, wait, what's mass? Like, the total mass? I think the total mass is gonna be the density times the volume, don't you? So that's density times, what do you think volume is? Volume's probably gonna be, oh, a cylinder, right? So that's gonna be pi times r squared, that's the area, and then we have to multiply it by the height. So I'm gonna take this stuff right here and notice if any of it is available here for questioning. Uh, oh, sorry, total radius. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, in fact, an awful lot of that is available for questioning. We reduce to I equals, so I'm factoring out a capital M. Here's the capital M. It takes care of a pi, it takes care of an H, it takes care of a row, and it takes care of two of my auras. So I get M R square as you were hoping, and there's still a two sitting out front. What the heck? This is exactly the result that we got in for an infinitely thin platter. Ah, I guess that's because, maybe that's even a duh. Didn't we see that for a disk, any repetitive business though, in the axis direction, if you just keep doing this over and over again, you're adding mass, but you're adding moment of inertia in the same way. It's linear. What I mean is moment of inertia is linear in mass that's distributed the same way along the axis. So you could do anything you want. could stack an infinite number up here. Okay, not an infinite number, because that's expensive. But you could stack like 35 of them up here, and you'd have a much greater total mass. Therefore, this equation would still be valid, because you'd just be multiplying the mass by 35, so you'd moment the inertia by 35. It's like, it's like business normal to the axis is like no business at all. Normal to the axis? Parallel to the axis. Any, anything going up this direction on the axis. Uh, yeah, is no business at all.